Hello, my name is Miguel Chang. I'm a university student at DeVry Long Beach, and I'm a game simulation programming major. I work as a marketing specialist in Santa Fe Springs, and today I'm going to show you a very simple Photoshop tutorial on how to create a PlayStation 3 with a drop shadow effect so it will make it look like it's floating on air. Now to get started, I want you to go to google.com and I want you to search for a PlayStation 3 image. And once you have a PlayStation 3 image, you're going to go ahead and save it. So here I have already my PlayStation 3 image. And I'm going to right click on it and you're going to click save image as. And then just hit save. I already have mine set for this demonstration. Hit OK. Now in the downloads uh, window, if you have it open, you're going to just right click on it and select open. And I'm going to just hit update because I already did it before. Now I want to increase the canvas size. So you're going to go to canvas size and you're going to set the percentage 200 for the height and width. So 200%. So there you can see that it's set. I'm going to hit OK. And now I'm going to fill it in with my paint bucket tool. And there you go. Now, it's very important that we duplicate this layer because we don't want to work with the locked layer. And then we're going to delete the background because it's locked. Hit OK. Now we're going to need a lot of layers for this. So you're going to go Layer, New, Layer. You're going to name this Gradient uh, Layer 1. And then you're going to need another gradient layer. Gradient layer two. So gradient layer two and gradient layer one. And now you're also going to need a shadow layer. You're also going to need a drop shadow layer. So to do this, I'm just going to layer new layer. Drop shadow layer. Hit OK. And now we're going to make a correction layer. Go to layer new. Correction layer. Hit OK. OK, now you should have this. And that looks about right. Now what I want to do is I want to move the gradient layers up. So it should be in that order. Now select your background copy and now you're going to click on your magic wand tool. Set the tolerance to 5, anti-alias, contiguous, do not sample all layers. Click anywhere in the background. Now you selected the background but you want to select the PlayStation 3. You're going to hit Control, Shift, and I. And now you just select the PlayStation 3. Now you're going to do a copy, so Control, Copy. And now you're going to paste it. You're going to paste this actually into your shadow layer. So make sure you have your shadow layer stuck in. Edit, paste. And now we want to do a flipping over of the image. So you're going to do Control T. And now we select it in Free Transform. You're going to right click and then you're going to select Flip Vertically. So now we just flipped the PlayStation 3 vertically and we're going to move it down. We want the bottom to touch the top of the corner and that looks about right. We're going to hit enter. Now that we have that we're going to actually skew the image and we're going to make a distortion, a parallelogram distortion. So you're going to select the right half of it starting at the point of the top left and now you're going to right click. You're going to select free transform. Right click again. Select skew. Now you're going to select the, uh, you're going to click on, click and drag the right side and move it up so it's barely touching. So a little bit more up. That looks good. Hit enter. Same thing for the other side. Just click anywhere to deselect and you're going to just start right at the very top center. And you're going to do the same thing for the other side. So free transform, select free transform, right clicking, select skew. And you're going to move this up. Make sure that it's touching. It doesn't have to be perfect, but try to get it as good as you can. And that looks about right. Hit enter. Now we're going to reduce the opacity to 50%. Now it looks ghostly. 
and that's great. That's exactly what we want. Now you're going to select the background copy again, and you're going to select the magic wand, and we're going to make another copy. So we're going to do Control Shift I to get an inverse of the image, and then Control Copy to copy the image, and we're going to paste it in our drop shadow layer. So we're going to do Edit, and we're going to do Paste. And now you can see that it's pasted into my drop shadow layer. We're going to do the same thing again. You're going to just select the background by selecting the background first in, in your layers window. And you're going to do Control Shift I to inverse the image. And I'm just selecting the PlayStation 3 again. Copy. Now you're going to go to your correction layer. Click on your correction layer. You're going to hit edit. And then you're going to hit paste. So now it should look like this. Now I want you to hide everything except for the drop shadow layer. Your drop shadow layer should be selected, hide the correction layer, hide all the gradient layers. So now you just have this. Now what I want you to do is just right, uh, double left click on the layer and then you're going to go and you're going to see an image that says layer style. You're going to see the window that says layer style. Click on drop shadow and then I want you to set the opacity to 60%. You're going to set the angle to 90% so the light source will be coming from the top. You're going to set the distance to 20. You're going to set the spread to 10, and you're going to leave the size to 5. And then you're going to click on anti-alias and click OK. And as you can see, it just added a drop shadow. But we don't want the edges to show, so we want to delete that. So we're going to select our eraser tool. We're going to set it to about 67, which is just fine. And we're going to just delete the edges so only the bottom has a drop shadow, because that makes sense in an image. So just delete this whole left and right side. Uh, you can delete the top if you want, but as long as you have a shadow in the bottom, you're good. Now, ha ha, you're going to make everything visible again by left-clicking on all the little eyes. And if you did it right, then you should only have a shadow at the bottom, and it looks very much believable. Now you're going to click on your gradient layer 2. You're going to select the paint bucket, click and drag it, click and hold it actually and click on your gradient tool. You should have it set to the second little color option here, which is foreground to transparent, and that's acceptable. Hit OK, and then you're going to have your foreground as white. You're going to start off right at the very, slightly below the shadow, and you're going to try to set it, and click, click and drag it to the shadow. Make it perpendicular, kind of. So that looks about right, that looks believable. And now you're going to select the other gradient layer, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to start off at the opposite end of the uh, reflective layer, and you're going to click and hold it to be perpendicular to the shadow. And that looks a little bit not right. Let's try it again. We're going to start from here, and we're going to try it again. Okay, that, look, that really is at a wrong angle. Let's try that again. We're going to just try it so we get it just right. Okay, that's perfect. Now that's acceptable. We're going to crop the image. So you're going to just select it right here, and you're going to just start at the top left and make a smaller image. Once you have it, go to Image, select Crop, and there you go. But we're not done yet. We're going to save the image now. And now you're going to select JPEG. Select it as, I have it as PlayStation 3 done. Just hit Save. Hit OK, select baseline optimize, maximum quality, hit OK. And then you have your JPEG. And now we're going to go on Adobe Photoshop Bridge to touch it up. So here at the very top, towards the left and center, we have a little button that says BR. That's the button to launch Adobe Photoshop Bridge. And then it's going to open up, and you should have your folder located. If not, you have to navigate to it. So here we're going to select the Photoshop done. We're going to right click, go to open in camera raw. Once we have camera raw open, we can select all of these settings here to adjust the color. We can also adjust the sharpness, but to save time, I've already have my settings preset. So you're going to click on this little menu button here. And then I have apply preset already saved. So I'm going to select my picture preset. Now as I select to look at the picture before and look at after. So that's after. And the image has been improved because it's now glossier. It looks better. If I zoom in all the way and use my hand tool, 
you will see that it looks a lot more cleaned up than before. And if I undo it, there's a lot of dirt, there's a lot of grain. It's not ready for print. It, it's really not a good image to put for marketing. But if I redo it again, you can see that it looks a lot better. So in this case, I'm ready to save it. And this is the final product. And at the very bottom left, you can click on Save Image. And this tells you which folder you want to save it to. So here we have our picture name and it has a plus and then there's a little other separate window where you can add a, an additional name to the file name. In this case, I have it as touched up. Set it to maximum quality and then hit save. Okay, and now it's saving. Okay, it just saved it. Now I'm gonna go back to my desktop. I'm gonna click on picture project and maximize this. I have a duplicate because that's the one that I did before delete the uh, touched up original because I already did this before and right click and hit, hit preview actually let's start preview with the original so we can compare so that's the original picture that's after we did it in Photoshop with the drop shadow and this is the final picture that has been touched up in Adobe Photoshop bridge which gives it a nice little reflective layer and a little shadow to it and that's ready for print it's ready for marketing and once again that's how you do um, a drop shadow for a product. Thank you. And my name is Miguel Chang, and I hope that you enjoyed this video. Bye.